Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we are starting with the 100 day project and this is day one of using my wrong hand. So um, for those of you who are new to my channel, uh, very early on in January I decided to you know, stop myself falling off my bike with my wrist and uh, smashed it into pieces. So I am in this lovely pink cast. Um, over over the elbow cast um, with my right hand which of course is my dominant hand and I wasn't able to do any art to do anything useful but, um, I use art as well as a way of practicing what I like to do as my mental health escape touchstone keep me sane so I was going a little bit nuts not arting so I decided I was going to have a practice. So I had a few practice pages before I started this project to just see if I could do it because I honestly didn't want to push myself too much if it was too painful for my, my wrist or if I found it too difficult. But I thought, okay, I can do this. And it was going to be a really great challenge for me to use my non-dominant hand. So on the 31st of January, the 100-day project began. And for those of you who have followed my channel for a little while, know that I've done the 100 day project for the last three years. So I got a little bit of FOMO and thought, oh, I can't miss out. So I'm, I'm going to join in. So I chose to work in um, a junk journal that was gifted to me by the amazing Chrissy Mannix um, to do my 100 day project. The reason I chose a junk journal it was for two reasons. One, the size is much smaller than I usually work in, which was good. Um, because I could create quick artworks without putting too much stress on my hand. And because it's a junk journal, you can sort of see on the other page, you know, it's already got bits and pieces on it. It's no stress, and if I made a mess of the page, that would be okay. So that's sort of the story behind it. This page is the first page I started with, and my idea in the beginning, it's sort of morphed since, was to start off just making really abstract backgrounds. So I was spreading out paint um, using my Dina Wakely paints. Um, I used night, blushing, uh, mineral, uh, a little bit of marine I think in the background. I used my Stabilo oil pencil to draw into it to get some texture onto it. I have used some Stabilo woodies which were the thick chunky pencils and some distress crayons to make some marks in the background and that beautiful um, coppery colour is the distress crayons too and now I'm using some stamps in some different coloured inks over the top to add in some mark making and one of the things that I have found really really useful when I've been doing this project is the fact that I can use um, mark making stamps to help me out because at this stage I didn't really didn't have much control with my left hand I could sort of mix paint and blend paint together and make really chunky marks on my page but to do something fine like trying to draw straight lines or do tiny little dots was just too difficult so being able to stamp them onto my page just gave me that sense of a little bit of control on my page with some of the stamp stamping on here it got a little bit too formal I suppose it sort of lost that sort of abstracty flowy type feel that I wanted on this page so I just added a little bit more white paint and then just scribbled in over the top of it I'm also spritzing my um, Stabilo oil pencil to get that um, beautiful bleed out from it so it's a gorgeous really inky black when you add water to it and um, gives this beautiful wicking effect on the page I had the circles in the background already so I just want to add a little bit more color to them so I'm using the um, distress crayon in the yellow and then again going around with my Stabilo oil pencil to add some extra lines to it so um, the great thing about where sort of some of the areas on the page were a little bit um, wet, uh, that meant the Stabilo oil pencil would go on a little bit darker in those areas. This is also my first time experimenting with 
trying to stencil. Trying to stencil when you can't really use your hand to hold the stencil still. You can see he's struggling with trying to use it there. Um, it was a little bit of a disaster, particularly with such a fine stencil, because every time I moved it, um, I would lose some of the detail. But, you know, I got, I got some detail in the background. It kind of worked, so it is what it is, really. Um, but it was a good way to get some extra white space onto my page. Now I'm going in with some of the night acrylic or a gloss spray just to do a little bit of splatter over the top and it's really hard to splatter one-handed <laughs> I have found um, I was very tempted to tap the um, spray bottle on my cast but I thought I'd cover that with ink a few weeks later and it was already covered in ink so it didn't take all that long one of the great things of putting, about putting splatter on a page though it's a really unifying technique because you've got no control over where the, the blobs go um, it's sort of a really great way to help lead your eye around the page to make it look like it's all you know it's it's deliberate it's supposed to be there um, which is really funny when you think it's totally abstract and you have no idea where it's going to go so I always like the, that sort of juxtaposition when you put splatter over the top now I'm looking for a quote to put on this page and my favourite stamps. So these are the Tim Holtz mic making stamps, um, these beautiful viney leaves. They remind me um, of a lot of the doodles that the lovely Megan um, Quinlan does, but um, they're in stamp form, which is really convenient when you can't draw. So um, if you haven't got the, any mic making stamps I'd highly recommend the Tim Holtz um, mic making stamps the hit that he released I think at the start of last year in January last year I know they're still available um, <clears throat> and he's got the two larger sets and a mini set of the same stamps so uh, if if you come across them I'd highly recommend them they're a great place to start the quote chip that I'm using is um, also one of the Tim Holtz ideology quote chips I love using these um, because they're slightly larger than the, the small talk stickers, which are some of my favourites as well. Um, but quite often with these, I take them off the chipboard. I just peel off the top layer just so the pages don't get very bulky. Um, and I find that works really, really well for me. I was really liking how this page is going together, but needed a little bit of contrast on it everything had sort of started to get a little bit white a little bit purpley and had lost that gorgeous sort of contrast so I decided to use an orange pen and the reason I chose orange is because of those purple tones in the background um, if you're looking for something to contrast use the opposite color on the color wheel so opposite purple is orange and that's the reason why I sort of chose that Orange isn't a colour I use very often in my artwork, but it, it does pack a real punch when you um, pull it out, as you can sort of see in this close-up. So you can see all those layers. You can see the splats in the background. You can see the tiny little dots from the stamping. Um, it was so much fun to do, and I was so proud of myself when I finished it that, you know, this is the first piece that I've done left-handed, and, um, yeah only got 99 more to go so hopefully I'll get this project finished as well um, I did finish the last three years so I am giving myself a little bit of grace this year but I'm I'm really hoping that I will get it completed until next time bye for now